Hey guys, it's Monday and you know what I do on Monday. I didn't do it last Monday, but this Monday we're back and we're back with a little bit more content. So today's feature is none other than Mr. Kitaka. I cannot pronounce his whole name. Kitaka, can you help me out there? It's, I'll help you my dear. It's Kitaka Chakumba Mau. Well, let's see, there's a whole mouthful. I can't see. And daddy, daddy, daddy is responsible because he said he wants to give you three African names. African names. So slave names, so he called me Kitaka Chakumba Mawutu. I mean, name me in a whole sentence. Kitaka is a good farmer, Chakumba is born on a Sunday, and Mawutu is possession of the Almighty. Oh, nice, nice. I wish my name had all this fanciness to <laughs> But a little bit of Kitaka. Kitaka has a whole umbrella of um, things that he do. So he's a motivational speaker, the co-owner of Roots International, which is a company that focuses on helping people live a healthier lifestyle. He's also a strategist, a political analyst, educator, media consultant, a TV host, a farmer, and I'm sure the list can go on, right? So, um, Kitaka does a lot of amazing things here in Grenada and if you're not following, then you need to be following him now on Radiant, Radiant 9, underscore 9, at, on, no, his, on here on Instagram. Yeah, Radiant 9. Okay, perfect. Alright, so Kitaka, let's get into this interview. It's a getting to know interview. So, yeah. tell me what inspires you? Well, for me, the biggest inspiration for me is music. And I think when Bob Marley said best, like when that music hits you, you feel no pain. If you were to be a fly in my room or my house, every day you'd see me busting wine, jumping up and down, having my own concert. It's like really, I have a album for like when I sad, when I'm a musician. So music for me is a vital part of inspiration, as well as I always like to study like great people who do a lot of amazing things and their story and so on also inspires me as well. But for me, Inspiration, music. When I think since the quarantine start, we got a bit of that. If if you have been following Kitaka, you would have seen once quarantine start, Kitaka was just dancing, singing, and, and having a blast, right? Um, okay, so since I've known you, I've never seen you like truly pissed off. But I know we all have a trigger. So what is something that would totally just piss you off? Well, if you don't know, for me, I like things to be done exceptionally well. I'm, I know, like, with a, with a part of perfectionist. So some, something that will piss me off is, like, if I'm working with people and we have a plan or see how something could be done better, and I'm trying to communicate that to you and you're really here and you want to cut corners and just want to do it anyhow, I keep by. That is yes. very, very sick, as well as injustice. If I see... Anybody that kind of like a poor person getting abused or anything, everything mm -hmm. doesn't get real red inside. Like, even right now in COVID times, like people who don't have money and things. And we, if someone who can help, not helping, are still starting to make money from them. Right. Everything does real fix. You understand? Right. So, a couple of the triggers did that will get me like red. And you'll see a kitaka that you never will recognize. Wow. <laughs> I didn't want to see that kitaka, trust me. <laughs> Uh, even me, even me, afraid that Kitaka, afraid it. <laughs> oh God, I can you imagine? Jeez. Um, so, okay, so with all the things that you're doing, those things take a lot of courage. So what have made you so courageous? Well, I think from since I was smaller, I was built mm -hmm. for this. I had it tough when I was younger, because mm -hmm. imagine just, just me name alone with, with sugar, a lot of anxiety in a public setting, like when we go to school for the first time in September and they go in a room and they need to introduce themselves and say their names. That used to be so traumatic for me because when I say my name, it's a whole class that's starting after class. Hey, what kind of name is that? Okay. <laughs> you know that I watch me and tell me, father, wicked to give me that name. But okay. the point is like I've always been like the oddball. I've always been like the only maybe mm. rasta the only person that not even meet in a place. So it, it has always had to make me face uncomfortable feelings at a, at a mm -hmm. young age. Mm -hmm. so it just me up and I just decided, well, no matter what, I am going to shine. 
And I just never, I, I, I used that as a strength as opposed to making it put me down. You know, right. but it was, it was a process of always being on the, on the lower end of the stick, always being the, the lonely one, always being the one that was different. And just mm. as I say, embrace it and make it my superpower. Mm. So, would you say that you have any fears? Well, even before oh. the show, I was talking to my roommate and, you know, she was telling me, she was, she was laughing and saying, like, she don't even know what fears I have. But I said, oh, God, I'm not a big psych. I only have some fears. <laughs> 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 I'm so courageous and I say things and I put myself out there and I do things. And she's like, I don't see you. I don't see, I never see you scared. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah. I feel fear. I feel fear every day. I mm -hmm. feel fear different things. Like, but for me, it's not about not being afraid, but it's about finding power when you feel that like fear to act courageously yeah. still. Because a, a soul there might seem to be brave and you feel he is brave, it means that he doesn't feel fear. But no, he, he feels fear, but he acts and he moves forward regardless of the fear he feels. And for mm -hmm. me, we should of our fears hold us down. For me, when I feel fear, it's for me to balance myself, regain that composure, and act. You know. I need, I need to learn that. I need to learn that because, I mean, you, you know that this is a personal issue of mine. <laughs> it, it, it's really... Ugh, ay, ay, ay. It's easier said than done. Done, done, yes. But, it's but what would you say is your proudest moment? Accomplishment. What? Well, I feel proud every single day because for me, I feel happy to know that I can have that level of quality of relationships with people and to impact people in a way because sometimes before I never mm -hmm. saw that, but like so many, so many of my friends would randomly send me a voice note and say, you know, they really appreciate what I've done in their lives and, and those things for me means the world. Mm -hmm. like, to know that at least, like how I choose to live and the courage I choose to, to, to utilize to live the way I am, and it, 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 it is able to be of benefit to somebody else. Because I try every right. day to be a, to whatever place I go, I try to bring value. And once I bring value, and the people feel the vibes, and it is, even though it's one person, that makes me feel proud. The money and so on, and other mm -hmm. things, just based on what society see, I'm coming first in class and having. <laughs> and and them things really matter to me. At the end of the day, the core relationships that I have and being able to see how a, a cool group that love and care about you and you love and care about them and you have a good relationship there mm -hmm. and you all benefit from being with each other and so on, that, that, that really makes me feel happy. Yeah. So lately I've been thinking a lot of um, my life and, and my purpose. So um, are you aware of what your purpose is? Are you living in your purpose at the moment or are you in the phase where you're still trying to figure out what it is well for me it's been it's always been a topical thing because it's, it's a debatable thing i mean mm -hmm. one for my little life is that living your purpose is you every day when you wake up in the morning being an instrument for the, the greatest of good to to be able to manifest no matter how it happens mm -hmm. because right. i mean i think hollywood and movies and things we all like see the people say oh everyone they have a big fancy story that they need to be this famous person or they need to be this big businessman or they need to be so much other things. But for me, I think every day with the life, God presents opportunities mm -hmm. for to live your purpose because it's a process. You can do everything one day, but every day is like you taking a step towards doing the greatest work that you could do. It might end up in you being some big thing. It might end up with you just being a, have your family and grow up some nice kids, it might be you just be a farmer, whatever it may be. But for mm -hmm. me, I oh every day I strive more than more than fifty percent to do things that not only benefits me but is of service to others. Mm -hmm. And I think once you're doing that, you are aligned to, to your quote unquote purpose naturally. And you, you, you might not have a word for it, you might not have a label for it, but you know that you're doing things that you're doing something you, good. And helping people out you and you're creating mm -hmm. good. Right, right. Okay, so we're moving on to a little more juicy kind of, you know, questions. <laughs> so, Kitaka, have you ever been in love? Ah, uh, you're asking me a very hard question. <laughs> I'm about that, and I'll be very real with you. I was actually thinking about that. And 
I could maybe think about maybe one time or twice where it was like, oh, I actually feel what people are sitting feel. But mm-hmm. I mean, I think I'm in love every day, but the, the, the head over heels kind of, <laughs> you know, butterfly and stomach kind of feeling. I've not had much of that in my life, you know. But for me, I could think about, you know, one person or two persons that, you know, really like create a great impact in my life and mm-hmm. I was able to share something very unique with them. Okay. You know, so I, I would say yes. Fair enough. But for the most part, sometimes it was just situation, what I say, situation ships. Situationships, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, what's the craziest thing you've ever done in the name of love? <laughs> um, all right, so, I'll give you a story. Mm-hmm. So, I met through a mutual fl- elder friend of mine in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. I met, she introduced me to a, a, a young lady in Jamaica who she, she thought that we would make a very good couple. Um, so, me and us started, we started to talk and vibes and so on. Sparks started to fly and things started to heat up. And the boss now, the boss decided now, well, I'm migrating. So blind love. So I mean, I, 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 I resigned from my job at that time. You know, convert my money in US and all kind of thing and pack up my clothes and thing. And head I had, man, Jamaica me had deal with it, isn't it? Oh, so <laughs> I live my whole life here and just go in Jamaica for the, for the, the um, for the sake of love, you know. Sake of love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like for me, that was like even even the young lady when I got there, she was like shocked. She was like, "What?" And she was yeah. a bit older, a bit older than me as well. So she went there and like, "What?" So that's and a that big move. A man dread, but that man just leave everything and just come over here and just jump into the unknown. So for me, as I look back, I I even surprised myself. I was like, "What? Were you capable of that kind of thing, man?" <laughs> <laughs> But well, I guess she really, she really hold me, but she really hold She well hold you. Who sing that song again? They well hold. What? How the song go? <laughs> she well hold him. Yeah, she well hold him. Oh my God. Okay, so since you've been in love, then you must have had some experience of heartbreak. Well, uh, it's kind of tough. I've never experienced a heartbreak where you're crying and oh. depressed. And I call him back to phone 20,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's said with the speaker box in the paperback. Oh, I've, been, I've, never been, I've never experienced that. But I would say maybe Jamaica is like an aspect where I felt that as well in terms of things not working out as I planned and making such sacrifices. So it was, yeah. I mean, at one point I look at it as a setback and as a hundred. But then right. after a while, I began to appreciate like the lessons that I learned from that relationship. So it kind of ended up being a positive. I guess because how others think and perceive life, I was always find a way to, you know, shift my perspective yeah. to look at it positively. So have you changed your views of love and relationships? Well, I've learned a lot, man. I mean, there was times when I was like, I, try, I used to try to be be all and end all, you know, that Romeo, you know, wanting to be everything for her, wanting to do all the nice things. Yeah. And then I see that backfire in a way, where you kind of create a, a, a system within the woman where she can stand up on her own two feet, because she's like everything. What it, when, if, if, if things go wrong, she could go suicide or all kind of thing. And I get, I get so extreme on the other relationship after where I was so kind of distant and, you know, present, but not consistent and present and always there. So for me, I've learned a lot over and over the time in terms of relationships and so on, like even listening more. Because as men sometimes, we just want to just like talk and just say things and just go with what we think. And we're really listening to the wisdom of the women. And I've learned. To draw on the wisdom of the women, because sometimes like women just see things very, very far, and sometimes they love you so much you now they might be uh, they'll be very honest with you and tell you the raw facts, and sometimes they don't like what they're telling you, but as it should, and the quicker you could take what they're telling you, you could better your life, because you don't just be there like your big ego, like I'm the man and I I'm always right. And so I've learned to listen, even like people like you and my female friends, I just learn a lot from you guys, and I just pick your brain and learn and you know draw from you. Mm-hmm. The- to make me better. Okay, Kitaka, so moving on from relationship type of love, what would you say, what, what does self-love mean to you? Well, I mean, I think it's very basic and simple. I mean, taking the best care of yourself. 
And I think that is very fundamental. If you want to even be able to do, start to do anything in the world, you need to take care of yourself first because that is your primary responsibility. So I think it's right that like feeding yourself well, you know, the thoughts that you allow to come into your mind, the amount of the substances you interact with, the people, you know, everything that, in that, that, that you indulge in, you know, ensuring that it promotes health and well-being and yeah. foster the vitality and, 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 and so on within your body and your mind and your spirit. Mm. So uh, do you have a self-care routine that, that you do daily? Um, I'm, not, I'm not as regimented like a, a drill sergeant, you know? <laughs> um, so I have, my, I have my days when I'm hitting and firing on all cylinders and mm -hmm. targets. And there are days when my schedule takes the best of me and I don't, I'm not able to be as consistent with certain things as possible. Right. Like, for instance, with me, I grew up country, I grew up out in the mud and so on. Mm -hmm. So like, my, 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 my skin regimen can improve. And even like with spoke about relationship earlier on, like in the past girlfriends have always like improved the importance of that, like in the moisturizing and so on. Sometimes mm -hmm. I just like cream my hand and just roll outside and put ashy. <laughs> <laughs> so in that physical aspect, there can be more. I mean, my, I, don't like, I don't like bad breath and so on. So I, my teeth are just take very good care of that. Um, more and more in the journey, I've learned to take more better care of myself because sometimes I've been so busy, always working and not really giving myself the care. You know, getting more sleep is something I've been trying to put in a, a, a fresh regimen, you know, because I don't sleep that much. So getting more Z's to regenerate my body, to give mm -hmm. me more and so on. I mean, drinking more water, you mm -hmm. know, consume less salt and sugar and these kind of things. Um, you know, just like consuming good content on social media and YouTube and so on. Right. That's right. a part of my self care. Because sometimes, if you don't really balance what you 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 you're digesting on social media, you could just kind of really tie up your system. So that is that is quite true. That is like I just recently, well, as of last week, I had to take a social media break. Like I totally needed it for my own self care, my own. I was. Sanity. I was tired. <laughs> it, it can be draining. It can be draining. It's necessary. What happens eh, is like your emotions goes on a roller coaster. Let's say you got a story. Let's say you click my story, you see how they're laughing. You click another person's story, they, they cry. You see another story, a man with something else. A man getting abused. A next story, in the space of a minute, yes. you experience a whole set of things that your body just. It's true, it's true, it's true. You don't really get a chance to balance yourself and, you know, regain equilibrium within yourself. You could just be all about the place, just as a story and then, just as social media. So it's important to find that time to, you know, to put a little pause, connect with yourself and just be balanced. What's your favorite dessert? It, to be honest with you, I don't like sweet things, you know, my weaknesses, salty things, eh? And even on a podcast, um, we were doing... Um, yesterday, Root, rooted reasoning. You guys can check us out on SoundCloud, iTunes, podcast, Spotify, everything. Rooted reasoning. It's the last episode we did, we spoke about that, and you know, mm -hmm. let's do us. Yeah, and teasing me because my weakness is grains. You know that snack called grains? No. It's like, it's like hot onion and it's like a sour cream kind of chip. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like salt. I, I feel salty things. You know, so that's why my I have a salty tooth. It's not really a sweet tooth, but I, my tolerance. I don't drink much juice. Yeah. I don't like cake like, and no, nah, I don't really like. I might eat a small, small piece and not really like go in that much. So salty tooth, no sweet tooth. Mm. Watch my. <laughs> <laughs> you have a favorite local meal dish? Local dish. But back in the days, eh, boy, I really like um, sticky soup. Eh? And like, but no. I, that is it. <laughs> but no one doubles have me in a different type of way, boy. boy. Well, I'm like, trying to soak in right now to, to make some doubles tomorrow. So, well, hold on, hold on. I want to sign in that with you. I want some doubles. Please dance. I'm putting me all around the show. So there's accountability. If you don't give me, I'm... The first time I tried it, I, I put too much baking soda. 
so it was kind of off. It was tasting good, eh? But it was just kind of yeah. off. But Barra was real good, too. So oh, you know well, it's wrong. You need, to, you need to teach me about the Barra, because the last time I made it, it was made it. Yeah. And I was, I, she, you know, I know it needs to be fried before about three seconds, but if you fry it too much, you didn't let it flow or rest, you know? Oh, yeah. But I take like, but I take like, like bakes. <laughs> I did not bar, you had to get it right. Yeah, and I, it was blasphemy. I had to confess to my daughter's lady that it was blasphemy. Oh. I had to own up again and just support her. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, um, what's your favorite adventure to have in Grenada? Mm, that's, that's a very interesting one. All right. I, I, need to, I need to see at least three. For me, like I have done this, and I think everyone should try to do it. Um, went up to Paradise Beach with significant order. It was a, it was a romantic setting. You know? I've never been to Paradise Beach. Yeah. We stepped on Paradise Beach, like out in the open. I'm saying, like we just spread our towels and I made a fire, and we slept there and the music and so on, and we um, scented candles and so on, and slept underneath the moon in on Paradise Beach. The best part is not in the night. Eh? Mm. Oh, you wake up morning, boy. That so nice. That, oh God! And I roasted some plantain, boy. Mm. Oh. <laughs> and I saw got a mango, and you know, gone bed for the whole three hours. I just did the water chilling. For me, that was so great. But yeah. other than that, I like adventurous things. Like mm. I like to like hunt. I went that time, Teddy, Teddy and I, and 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 Liana we went to Smokes and Catching. I saw for spring months and catching why. That's on my list. I mean, it's 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 not for the faint-hearted, you know. It's not for those that are really, you know, you know, courageous. But when you get to that sort of spring, it's like a gold mine. You you like you reach a gold mine, similar to Golden Falls, you know. But oh. it, it tests it tests your strength and it pushes you, and then there's a wonderful reward at the end. And more other than that, I like you know waterfalls. I like the usual. Um, just driving around and just checking out random spots like what you do. I wish we could do one of those things one of these days. I can't believe we are new friends. And we, have, we ain't going on an adventure yet. I know, I know. Let me make that happen under the COVID times because I know after COVID I will be very busy. So let me make that happen. Make that you're, happen. you're very busy now, so... <sighs> no, no, we need to, I, I, will make, I will make the time. That is my um, gift to you for starting this series and for actually doing some of the amazing th- plans that you have. To execute that's a gift for me to, to encourage you to keep on tra- on track okay perfect perfect 